let's continue our discussion of the Maxwell wave equation. And we had from the left-hand side, that's the curl of the curl of E, this expression, which you can look up in the appendix. It's a vector identity. It has two terms, this term and this term. Now, we know from Gauss's law that in this case we have no charges, that del dot E is equal to zero. So this term disappears, so we are left with simply minus grad squared of E. Now, the grad operator squared is called the Laplacian. It's a second derivative operator. On the right-hand side, we have minus the time derivative of the curl of H. And there's a mu that should be right here as well. So let's, I forgot to put that in. Let's put in the mu. So minus mu time derivative of the curl of H and the curl of H, curl, remember, is the extraction of rotation operation. So these are the circulating field lines around a current. And the current in this place, in this situation, is described by this term here, the time derivative of E multiplied by epsilon. So what we do now is we can replace the curl of H with this term from the right side of Ampere's law, and then we get a time derivative of a time derivative. Epsilon is a constant in time, so it comes out, and we have this as the final result of our manipulations. Let's look at that a little further. Let's expand out what the gradient squared operator is. And here it's all expanded out, applied to the vector E, the electric field. And on the right side, we have the second time derivative of the electric field multiplied by this. Now, what is this? Well, that's an exercise for you, but this equation is in fact the three-dimensional wave equation. And in the exercises, we'll look at the meaning of this, its dimensions, and how we use it in general.